Hi, I am not so long in IT. I switched less than three years ago from biology. And though I already have some commercial experience, uh, to check for possible white spots in my basic knowledge, not long ago I started Harvard's CS50 course. The task for week zero there is to create an application on Scratch, a block-based visual programming language. As it's said, it's targeted primarily on children, but allows building quite complex and interesting things. Uh, my first idea was to create an epidemics simulator, but then I watched some interactive stories, examples, and understood that this language or platform could be used to create a chatbot. So this episode will be about creating a chatbot on Scratch and JavaScript. Actually, this won't be a classical chatbot, but a, so to say, sentiment indicator, an application where a user may enter a phrase and get the sentiment score for it through the visualization and audio output. Here is how it will look like when ready. So, in the beginning, there was an idea and it, it looked as follows. These are uh, my notes in my work in Google Spreadsheet. So, the idea was to create an application which would send a request to the Google Natural Language API uh, to understand how positive or negative is the, so to say, the mood of the text. And then we would need to somehow display this result in graphics and sound. The first and the biggest task was to understand how to make a calls to an external API from scratch. It appeared that this is not possible with the official version of the platform, but it can be done on the platform called ScratchX, which allows to write and test so-called custom extensions. Such extensions allow creating a custom scratch block, which, for example, can call an external API. This is what we need. Then I started to read the documentation on writing custom extensions and analyzing available examples. I found that I need a so-called reporter block with that weights. Here is an example with a function which makes requests to the Open Weather Map API. We will need to tweak it a bit to make requests to the Google Natural Languages Language API API. So let's copy this example to a new JavaScript file, which can be called, for example, sentimentfetcher.js. Now let's make the needed changes. The first thing is that for working with Google Natural Language API, we need a corresponding key. So let's go to Google Cloud Console Choose one of our projects or create a new one. Go to Menu A APIs and Services. Enable APIs and Services. Search for Google Cloud Natural Language API and enable it. We may be asked uh, to enable billing for our project if it wasn't done earlier. After enabling Google Natural Language API, we need to go to Menu, APIs and, and Resources, Credentials, and get or create a new API key and copy it. I'm not hiding this key as it will be deleted after making this video. OK, we have the key. Before we will make updates to our code, it's quicker to test making requests in some app like Postman. So let's, let's launch Postman and create a new request there. Next, we need to know what endpoint we should be making requests to and how these requests should be structured. This can be found in the documentation of this API. The URL we need starts with language Google APIs com. So let's copy it.
and then we need to add version 1 beta 2 or version 1 will also be okay slash documents analyze sentiment and to be authorized at the end of this URL we need to add question mark key and our key which we got earlier let's indicate that our body contents will be in the, in the format of application JSON and here is the payload we should be passing in the body of our request ok let's make a request and see what we are getting so we need this data document sentiment score and magnitude the score is the value which shows how negative or positive is the sentiment of the text and it can be from minus 1 to plus 1 and magnitude indicates the absolute magnitude of sentiment and it's a non-negative number from 0 to infinity let's make the needed changes in our code in our custom extension function let's create a variable API key and set it equal to the key we just got then let's indicate that our request should be of type post and indicate the URL we will be sending requests to then we will write that content type should be application JSON and in and uh, set the char set UTF 8 and finally we will add a key called data and paste the payload we we are passing in the body of the request let's replace the test string with a variable user input which will be passed to this function searching over the web I found a question on Stack Overflow with a very similar request example and here guys are writing that we need to JSON stringify this object which is being passed so let's uh, do this okay now if we successfully get the sentiment data we need to extract our confidence score and magnitude let's create a variable sentiment score and set it equal to sentiment data document sentiment score and a variable sentiment magnitude which will be set equal to which will be equal to sentiment data document sentiment magnitude running a bit ahead of the story here we will add that if we received values if the received values are equal to zero then we will set these variables equal to strings with 0, 0.0 and in case of sentiment score this value will be preceded also by a plus why we are doing this will be more clear a bit later so next we will combine these values in a string of the following following format and pass it to the callback function We also need to update the text in our custom block. The name of the function making the request, the default phrase displayed in this field, and also the name of our custom extension. And one final touch is that as I will remove my API key from the code and replace it with a string your Google Natural Language API key let's add a check in our function that if api key is equal to this string to this placeholder string then we will return by calling the callback function and passing a string no api key in our scratch app we will be checking for this string and if no api key is present in our function then we will inform the user to provide 
an API key. So our extension is ready. Now let's go to Scratchix and build our app. At this point my experience with Scratch was limited by David Smellen's presentation in the CS50 lecture. And I also, I also watched a few basic tutorials on YouTube. So I went to Scratchix.org and started to investigate the extensions listed there. So I opened the weather app and looked how it's working and how it's using its custom extension. I uploaded my extension by clicking on the button Load Experimental Extension with Shift key pressed down. And then I replaced the block with a weather extension with my own one and tried how it was working. As we see, when we enter some phrase in the field of our extension and then click on the sprite, it's responding with a phrase from the weather app plus the response from our extension with sentiment, score and magnitude. We can change the intro phrase for something more relevant like sentiment indices are. Ok, so the main part of our app is working. Now we need to build our own, our own Scratch application and implement the features we wanted. Namely, we need to invent and implement how we will be displaying our sentiment parameters, visually and with sound. So let's start building our Scratch app. Uh, let me remind that as we are using a custom extension, we are working on Scratch X platform and not on the one available on scratch.mit.edu. Let's create a new file. Let's choose some background that is a backdrop. I've chosen some light blue color. And for the sprite I've chosen a green round button. Our, uh, our application will be launched on click on the green flag. So, with our sprite selected, let's go to events and add the one green flag select clicked block as the first one in our application. All the code of our app will be in the eternal while loop. So, let's add a block forever from the controls group. Next, we need to get some input from, you, from our user and pass it to our custom extension to get the sentiment score. Let's add ask and wait block from sensing and update the title with enter something. The result will be automatically stored in the answer variable. So if we add some output block here, like think for some seconds, uh, with our answer inserted, we will get what we have entered earlier. As we don't need to display a user's input, we can remove this block. Next, we need to make a call to Google Natural Language API and get our sentiment score and magnitude. For storing the response, we will create a variable sentiment data. Next, we will add the block set sentiment data equal to. And here should be our custom extension block. Let's import our custom extension by going to scripts, more blocks, and clicking on load experimental extension with our shift key pressed and then choose the GS file with our extension. So we have our extension. Let's insert this block to the set sentiment data block and let's also pass the answer variable holding what the user has entered to our custom extension block. To test we can again use the thing for some seconds block. As we see, we are successfully getting sentiment data. Next, we need to parse this string to get two separate variables, sentiment score and sentiment magnitude, which will be used for our sentiment 
vis visualization and vocalization. For this, let's create two new variables sentiment score and sentiment magnitude. The string which is being returned by our custom extension looks like this. First, we have four symbols for sentiment score with plus or minus in the be beginning. And we know that sentiment score will always take only four characters, as it may change from minus one to plus one. Next, the fifth character is our delimiter, a vertical bar. So to get sentiment score, we can use blocks join and letter x of word y, y to join the first four letters of this string. After the fifth symbol, our delimiter, our sentiment magnitude goes. And here it's a bit more tricky. Though in my tests I, ha I haven't seen sentiment magnitude to be more than 1, and it's almost always is equal to the absolute value of sentiment score, in the documentation it's stated that magnitude can go from 0 to infinity, so we can be sure in how many characters it, it may take. Scratch doesn't have a ready block for getting a substring, so we will make a workaround and create a for loop to collect the characters from the sixth to the end of the, our sentiment data string. We will create a new variable counter and set it equal to 1. Also, we will set our sentiment magnitude equal to an empty value. Then we will add a repeat block, the number of iterations of which will be equal to, to the length our, of our sentiment data string, minus 5, as it was discussed earlier. On each iteration, we will set our sentiment magnitude to sentiment magnitude plus the letter at the position of counter plus 5 of the length of the sentiment data, and also we will increase our counter by 1. So now that we have our sentiment score and sentiment magnitude, it's time to think how could we display them. Let's start from visual representation. I thought that magnitude could be represented by the size of our sprite and sentiment score by color. And here let's start from sentiment magnitude. So the higher the magnitude, the bigger should become our sprite. It would be nice if it gradually, but rather quickly increased or decreased and then gradually returned to its original scale. So we need two helper variables, change in steps. This is in how many steps or iterations should the sprite transform. And another is sprite size percent, size of our sprite in, in percents. Let's change, let change in steps be 20 for a nice smooth change and let the initial sprite size percent be 200. And let's set the size of our sprite to this sprite size percent value. Next, we will add a repeat cycle, which will make change in steps iterations. On each iteration, we will recalculate our sprite size percent as the previous sprite size percent plus, but for negative values this will turn into minus, so plus our sentiment magnitude times 200. This is just a magic number I've chosen playing with size. And we will divide this product by change in steps. That is on every iteration we will increase or decrease our sprite in size by, by a fixed value 
proportional to the sentiment magnitude which we got. And we will set the size of our sprite to this new value. To see these transitions we need to add a weight block on each iteration. Let's set it equal to 0.1 second. So, and let's also make the block to return the sprite to its original size. We will copy our first repeat block and just replace the plus sign in the recalculation of sprite size with a minus sign. And also let's add a weight block between our cycles to display the final size for several seconds. So we are displaying sentiment magnitude. Now it's time to deal with our sentiment score. One of the possible ways is to map this value to some colors. For example, let plus 1, which corresponds to maximum positive score, be green, and minus 1, maximum negative score, be red, with yellow for, value, for values about 0. Scratch has a block set color effect too, uh, which allows setting color effect from 0 to 200. Uh, this is not set in some specific color, but applying some color change to the original color of the sprite. My sprite is originally mostly green. I tried inserting different values into this block and determined that for my sprite value 200 will be will give green and 120 will give red. And I actually don't, don't need the values below 120. That is, we have the interval from 200 to 120, that is 80 points. And the middle value, which will correspond to natural sentiment, will, will be 160. Let's create a variable color effect set its initial value to 160 and apply to our sprite. Next, in our first repeat block, on each iteration, let's recalculate color effect. We will take the previous val value of color effect and add 40 multiplied by our sentiment score and divide it by changing steps. And let's apply this color effect. In the second cycle, we will be changing our, changing our color effect in the re reverse direction. We can move this script into our, into our main one and test how it's working. So our sprite displays sentiment score and magnitude visually. How could we display it also with sounds? There are quite many variants here. We will implement a quite simple one. Sentiment magnitude will correspond to volume and we will be using low sounds to display negative sentiment and high sounds for positive sentiment. Also, in case of sound, I decided to insert it between the two cycles where the appearance of our sprite is changing. Let's start with sentiment, magnitude and volume. It's probably not very good to use too low volume, as the user might not hear it at all. And we also can't increase volume to infinity. So I decided to modulate volume in the interval from 20 to 100%. That is, zero sentiment magnitude will correspond to 2 to 20% of volume, and magnitude 1 and above will be 100% volume. Let's create a variable volume and calculate it. So if sentiment magnitude is more than 1, 
volume will be 100 else volume will be calculated as 20 plus 80 times sentiment magnitude and set volume to the value we have calculated. Uh, now as for the musical representation of sentiment score. I played with a block called play note x for y bits and empirically have chosen the interval of 60 notes from note 40 to note 100 to represent changes of sentiment score from minus 1 to plus 1. That is in the natural sentiment score 0 will be a note 70. We will be playing not one but three successive notes, starting from the one which will be calculated. So let's add a new variable starting note and calculate it as 70 plus 30 times sentiment score. And after calculating this starting note, let's play it for 0.7 beats. Then let's play the next note, which is starting note plus 1 for 0.7 beats, and one more, that is starting note plus 2 for another 0.7 beats. Uh, let's test this. Ok, we are almost done. Let's add some final additional touches. As you might remember, in, my, in our custom extension, we need to have an API key to make requests to the Google, Google Natural Language API. And I also noted that I will remove my key, and in case if someone would like to use this extension, then he or she would need to insert his or she or her own key. So let's add a check in our scratch app. Uh, we will check the response if and if it indicates that no key was provided. Then let's notify the user about it. Uh, also, let's clear the values of our sentiment score and sentiment magnitude at the end of each round. In the requirements to the Scratch project in a CS50 course, among the others there are two points, that the app should have not less than two sprites and uh, not less than three scripts, that is groups of blocks. Uh, the following updates aren't really needed for this app, but will be added to satisfy the formal requirements. So we will add the second sprite and some basic script for it, and also we will add another script for the first sprite, which will be triggered on clicking the green flag and uh, setting the default color and size of the sprite. Let's test this. So that's it. Hope you liked it. See you.